Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. We're down in our visitor center at our submarine periscope, and today we're going to do a whole video on periscopes. Would you believe it if I told you that the battleship has more periscopes than an entire fleet of submarines? Let me explain. Submarines usually have two periscopes, an attack scope and an observation scope or, in the case of modern submarines, photonics masts as opposed to true periscopes, regardless. Uh, so most submarines have two periscopes. The battleship has a series of periscopes throughout for a variety of different jobs, and we're going to go through the ship and look at those. Both of your submarine periscopes are side by side on the conning tower, and the captain or officer of the deck or whoever would be using them uh, typically, the observation scope is a little bit bigger, and it gives you a little bit better view. And then your attack scope is what you switch to when you're attacking another ship. The Navy's not very creative when it comes to naming things. Uh, it, it's a much thinner scope uh, so that it leaves less of a profile. And because of that, it, it doesn't quite give you the same uh, range and magnification and everything else that the observation scope does. So you've got two, they're both for the same person, it's just depending on uh, what job you have. And remember, there are close to two dozen museum submarines in this country, so be sure to go and check them out. If you're in the Philadelphia area to visit Battleship New Jersey, there's also a World War II fleet submarine named Bakuna, just across the river from Camden where the battleship is. You can go and visit her, and she's got her two scopes up, uh, so you can actually see the difference between the two but there are a tremendous number of cities and cornfields that have submarines in them um, and the basement of a museum, and they're all over the place. Uh, be sure to go to the website linked in the description below, uh, hinsa.org, to check out where other submarines are when you're planning your vacation. There might be one closer to you than you think. The first two periscopes we have are here in the conning tower. You'll notice the conning tower has view slits all around it. That doesn't give the officer of the deck a particularly good view of where you're going. Outside of combat, that's fine. You're outside the conning tower and you can see through the bridge windows. But in combat, when you're sealed in here for protection, those view slits are more for ventilation than being able to see where you're going. However, a pair of periscopes, one on each side, able to rotate 360 degrees and even look up and down via the left-hand wheel give you a much better view of what's going on and it's even got a crosshair. So uh, these are our first periscopes. We'll see a couple that are in armored parts of the ship like this and they're just for looking out similar to a submarine's periscope particularly the observation scope. Our next use of periscopes is for range finding. This is like a submarine's attack scope, but on steroids. There are two viewports, one here and one on the other side, where the operator controls these hand wheels that can turn the periscope. And not only is this periscope turning, but there are two other periscopes, one on each side, which are also turning. We are currently in the upper level of the conning tower on the O5 level. This is designated as spot three. It is the third main battery fire control director, which can take control if the other two mounted high in the superstructure get knocked out. So this one is not as good as those range finders, but it is low enough that it can be very heavily armored. This particular rangefinder is called a Mark 40, and it was the backup for uh, many American World War II battleships, and because we didn't design large gun systems post that, it just got retained straight into the 90s. So one cool feature of these periscopes is you've got an indicator here telling you the degrees of bearing to the target, so that uh, somebody's looking through the periscope and turning this, somebody else can be looking at that and on a talker's headset and communicating with guys down in the uh, fire control center where the market range keeper is and tell them what the 
bearing of the enemy target is. Range finders are purely redundant because we've got uh, range finding radars installed by the time the ship is built. And uh, these work in all weather. Whereas the range finder, you've you got to be able to see the target to get them uh, in your scope. Now we're on top of the O5 conning tower. And from here, you can see the tops of the various periscopes. This is the one from down in the uh, bridge on the O4 level, comes through the O5 level, and then up to here to look out at the cruiser Olympia. This guy is the big one associated with the Mark 40 director. And then the smaller ones that were attached to it are this one over here, and there's one on the other side. One of my favorite fun facts about Iowa-class battleships is the gun turret it alone weighs 2,200 tons, which is a little bit more than a World War II era submarine. On top of that, each gun turret has a crew of 80, which is just a little bit under what most World War II submarines had, at least American fleet boats. And each gun turret has two periscopes, just like a World War II fleet boat. Uh, one periscope is for the turret officer, and one is for the gun captain. And again, there's no windows in a turret because of the armor, much like there's no windows in a submarine for hopefully obvious reasons. Um, and so you need the periscopes to be able to look out of the top. If your range finding equipment gets knocked out, the turrets can also go under local control, and so these periscopes are important for that as well. The final type of periscope to talk about on the battleship today are the ones in the fire rooms. Each fire room has two periscopes uh, per boiler. So each fire room has two boilers, there's four periscopes. These periscopes is looking at the exhaust gas coming out of the saturated steam side. One's looking at the exhaust gas coming out of the superheated steam side. Down in the fire room, it's important to balance your fuel air mixture. If you've got too much air in your fuel air mixture, the smoke comes out of the sack white. If you've got too much fuel in your fuel air mixture, it comes out black. If you're able to get a clear haze, not only is your mixture as efficient as possible, but also your ship isn't putting out telltale signatures that it's over the horizon because of a huge smoke cloud. So one of the jobs in the fire room is to constantly be checking these periscopes to see what color smoke you have. The other periscopes are uh, pretty self-explanatory. You're looking out at a distance with these, They've got a light in them, and they're pretty much looking at the exhaust uh, trunk where the smoke is coming up to the smokestack, 11 stories above. Uh, and so you're just looking at what is what color smoke is coming in front of that white light in front of the mirror of the periscope. So you can see the mirror and the light if you look through this one, but obviously our boiler is not lit off, so we don't have any smoke coming through it. So... There you can see that while submarines might be known for their periscopes, battleships have a whole fleet of submarines worth of periscopes on board. Can you think of any other type of system that is predominantly associated with another type of ship, airplane, whatever, that uh, battleships might have a preponderance of? Let us know in the comment section down below. Maybe it'll become a future video. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us, and there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting us. You can also support the museum by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel. Thanks for watching.